Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, and I'm on a journey to educate millions of people just like you on personal finance. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to retire early and what time frame this is possible in. And just before we get into it, I heard the best way to retire is by hitting the like button down below. And as always, my content is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Everyone's in their own financial position and don't seek guidance from me. But without further ado, let's get into it. The easiest step to determine when to retire is to first understand how much money you need in order to retire. This can act as a benchmark or goal that must be surpassed if you live your life in the freedom and comfort of doing what you want when you want to do it. So you as the person intending to retire must conclude how much monthly income you desire in order to live out your life without factoring in taxes. So ask yourself, do I need $5,000 a month? Do I need $10,000 to live out a more extravagant lifestyle with lots of holidays? Whatever the number is, and it does require a bit of thought, but looking at future payments such as life insurance or a car you want or house mortgages that you still need to pay off and then look at future holidays you have to book or you have a hobby that you want to pursue. Take out a calculator on your phone right now and multiply that monthly income times 200. Now Hayden you may ask what does this number mean? Well guys this is the number I talked about earlier that we need a benchmark and is your goal that you want to retire with. Now for simplicity's sake we're going to use the number 5000 or $5,000 a month for example and then multiply by 200 you get a million dollars, simple. Now we're gonna take that number, a million, and multiply it by 6%. You can do this on your calculator by typing a million dollars, one, six zeros, and then multiply it by 1.06, which will reach your 6%. The reason we do this is because a 6% annual return is a very conservative number for something like the S&P 500, which we wanna invest in, or any other alternative investment that we desire. So when we do this step, it's gonna spit out $1,060,000. Therefore, the difference between $1,060,000 million and a million is just $60,000, and that will be our yearly income. And then divide it by 12, that will be $5,000, and that's our monthly income that we want. And we call this rule of 200 because it grants your wealth goal that you can retire with and feel safe pulling out $5,000 every month and live out the rest of your life. Now, this isn't all in schools because you don't have to worry about it until just after you finish. But it's understand that there are two key phases in life in terms of your career and your investments. There is either the building phase of life or the enjoyment phase of life. And because of school and societal values, most young people don't understand when in their lives these phases come in. Most people believe that their enjoyment phase in life is in their 20s, and you should enjoy them. However, this decade in our 20s is the most important in all our lives because it determines the rest of it. So the building phase generally covers working hard, earning a living, and saving and investing to reach that wealth goal that you set out to achieve. And to be honest with you, for most people that actually focus during this decade can reach a wealth goal between 30 and 35 years old, realistically. And once you reach a wealth goal, if you so choose, you can exit the building phase and go translate to the enjoyment phase where you live off your invested income. But it's understanding there's a point that we strive towards that allows us to reach retirement and the average person doesn't realize this. And without realizing what this point is, we don't ever have the opportunity to accomplish it. However, here is some perspective. Take your net worth today and, well, there's been blood in the streets, but let's say my net worth was roughly 40K. But whatever it is, take your net worth and do the 6% rule we talked about earlier, which is just times in it by 1.06. For me, it'd be 42,400, so the difference between that and 40,000 is 2,400. Divided by 12, and that's an output of $200 a month. Can I retire from that? No. But hey, what if I reinvest it all back into stocks? You still can't retire. This is because you don't need cash flow to survive in the building phase of life. Since as income comes in, you can save and invest the rest. Whilst in the enjoyment phase of life, you're actually not working, so that invested income is now your own actual income. Now the other issue with cash flow during the building phase of life is that if you make 120 grand per year from your salary and then 20 grand from passive income, the 20 grand you make from passive income here in Australia will be taxed on top of your salary, which will lead to a 37% tax on your dividends. Congratulations, you made 20 grand of invested income, but you have to actually give $7,400 to the government and then only you get to reinvest $12,000. $12,600. That's it. So you've actually restrained yourself from accelerating towards your wealth figure. So instead of chasing cash flow during the building phase of life, we'd much rather invest in high growth stocks that you don't have to pay taxes on until we sell with long-term capital gains tax which is much cheaper because the Australian government or any government in the world really wants to encourage investing for the long-term growth of their country. We as investors in the building phase of life must avoid taxes as early as possible. Buying real estate at underpriced value that you've heavily researched within this market, the increasing value of the home won't result in taxes 
and some of the rental income can be offset during tax time due to some of the tax advantages that come with real estate. But some basic skills can be learned to scale up the value of your home through watching YouTube videos on carpentry, painting walls, fixing up your front lawn, and other general fix-ups, and it's allowing you to rent your house out for more, whilst also growing towards your wealth goal. Now, the hidden costs of receiving passive income during the building phase of life is the risk of only spending money that I earn from passive income. Again, you're only wasting your hard-earned money on simple things that are wasteful. You receive $200 of passive income and you spend all on shoes. It's just not worth it. Now, just want to get through some of the simple psychological steps. You receive income from work or side hustles. You budget for your expenditures. You save and invest the rest to grow towards your wealth goal. And once you reach that goal, you can fulfill your wants and needs later in life. Now, how do you may ask, how do I start this building phase you speak about? First things first, calculate wealth goal from earlier and write down somewhere. You may want to stick it on the wall or on the back of your bathroom door, again with the rhymes. But ideally, you want to put it somewhere that you see it every day and you think to yourself, what did I do today to take a step closer to my wealth goal? But what can you invest in if you only have a little money? Well, it's yourself. You don't need a lot of money, if not at all, to just go in the library and borrow a book. It's cliche, but if you read a book about a knowledgeable person, like the man himself, you can get a lifetime of knowledge with just a couple hours of time. Maybe you want to start editing videos for a company. Spend a couple hundred dollars on someone who recommended a course to you about editing videos. There's millions of options out there, you just have to look for them. But invest in skills that can build your net worth and not your cash flow. Now we'll get a bit more lighthearted and talk about the enjoyment phase of life. You've just surpassed a goal that you've written on your post note. You can now retire happily without ever worrying about anything financially. Now don't forget you don't have to retire. If you love your job and still find it as a hobby, you can just continue doing it but just maybe take some more breaks to play golf or board games with your family. Because the best part about board games is that you can make constant cash flow. Look at that. Another cringy, it's not even a skit, but another cringy skit. What am I doing? But let's say you don't want to work again. What do you do? Well, we have to switch our wealth to cash flow and opportunities. But you have to watch out because if you sell your gross stocks, you have to pay tax on those capital gains just to invest in these dividend stocks, which also pay more tax. <sighs> these governments. So that's an issue. Well, in order to avoid more taxes, you have to move your residency for a couple of years to a different state or country that has low or no capital gains tax. As far as I'm aware, moving away from high tax states such as California and moving to these low or no tax states that are listed here will reduce your taxes astronomically so you can make that switch. But you have to live there for a couple of years, so don't listen to me who's from Australia. Consult with an actual professional who knows what they're doing in terms of taxes. Real estate is another way to increase your cash flow, whilst also allowing you to avoid a large amount of taxes. So that's another great investment, but look, there's no correct way. As long as you do your own research, you can retire successfully. But this is just a blueprint on how to do it. Now I'm gonna disclose my three favorite stocks that have high dividend yields and you can park your wealth figure into. And of course, we're still gonna use that million dollar example from earlier on. And the first one is at and It has a dividend yield of 5.72% and has paid this out for decades. This multinational telecommunication company was established by Alexander Bell when he first patented the phone in 1877. And it still remains a strong company over 150 years later. I actually used his services when I went to America about six years ago, and it seems to be just as popular today as far as I'm aware, alongside companies like Verizon, Verizon, Verizon. I'm starting to get an American accent, apparently. Now, of course, during retirement, you hope that this investment appreciates over time. However, the safety of this dividend giving you $57,200 a year can ensure that you'll still maintain your $5,000 a month goal. Now, more importantly, let's get excited for some real Australian companies, and our first one's gonna be Rio Tinto. This mining company is the second largest iron ore producer in the world. There's almost doubled its share price in the last five years. So a great performing stock with strong fundamentals of an entrenched business that's been around for 149 years. How could it get any better? Well, a whopping 11.03% dividend yield means a million dollars will provide you $110,300 annually, and they've delivered the dividend every six months for the last 10 years. And Australia was a global leader in iron exports, at roughly 56% of the total value of the industry from the latest 2020 records. So this company will continue to grow steadily. And don't forget they also produce largely in copper, aluminium and minerals. Now the other large iron producer in Australia is BHP. This immense conglomerate is in fact the world's largest iron producer and mining company in the world. 
that also operates in the petroleum industry. Its prices surged over the last five years and has a dividend yield of 10.28%. So again, can grant an annual return of $102,800, which is well above our monthly income goal, along with ensuring we're investing in one of the biggest blue chip stocks that will continue to grow and advance its operations. And if you haven't realized, I'm trying to promote Australian companies so you can give us all your money. These two companies are also available in NASDAQ so all you Americans can invest in it in your home country. The general values in terms of reaching wealth figure is keeping good spending habits and consistently investing through dollar cost averaging into your investments. But with that said guys, thanks for tuning in to the simplest investing strategy to retire by 2030. Click on my previous video where I gave my favorite passive income ideas for 2022. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm trying to get my message out to as many people as possible so you supporting the channel will help contribute to the mission. Below my socials, but anyway guys, heading out.